A resistor, R equals 900 ohms. A capacitor, C equals 0.25 microfarads. And an inductor, L equals 2.5 henrys, are connected in series across a 240 hertz AC source for which Vmax is equal to 135 volts. Calculate the following. A, the impedance. B, the maximum current. C, the phase angle. And D, is the current leading, lagging, or is, uh, or is there no difference? The first thing this problem wants is the impedance, and so we'll go ahead and calculate that. So the impedance is equal to the square root of R squared, the, re the resistance squared, plus XL minus XC squared. And in our case, we're not given XL or XC, we're given L and C, and so the Inductive reactance is equal to 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductance. The capacitive reactance is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance. And so that gives us a formula of the impedance is equal to the square root of the resistance squared plus 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductance minus 1 over 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance, and all of that unit is squared. The question gives us all of that information. It gives us the resistance, it gives us the frequency, and it gives us the inductance and the capacitance. So you have everything you need to calculate the impedance. The only thing not given in SI units is the capacitance. It was given in microfarads, so make sure you convert that to farads, and then plug in your numbers. I got 1,000, so I got 1,434, what did I put a 7? 34.721 ohms is my answer. The next part of the question wants I max, and so we're just going to use, uh, we're just going to use Ohm's law. And so Ohm's law is that uh, delta V max equals I max times the impedance. And so we already calculated the impedance. We just got to divide it over, and we get I max is equal to delta V max over Z. If you did your impedance right, you calculated that in SI units, and the voltage is given to us in SI units. So you should be able to just put one over the other and get that 0 0.094095 amps. And it wants it in amps, so you don't have to convert anything here. And then it asks for the phase angle. So let me go ahead and draw the picture here. So I have a triangle. And if I assume that this is my impedance, then this side would be my resistance. And this side would be uh, the inductive uh, reactance minus the capacitive reactance. And the phase angle would be the angle between the resistance and the inductance or I'm sorry, the impedance. So the, the angle between the resistance and the impedance is the phase angle. So because you already know the impedance and the resistance, you can use the cosine. Um, now the textbook defines this phase angle. It defines it as XL minus XC over R is equal to tangent of the phase angle. So that's saying the opposite over the adjacent is equal to the tangent of the angle. Well, yeah, that's the same thing as saying that the uh, so the that R over Z is equal to cosine of the angle. But I'll leave it up to you. You can do it either way. Uh, so let's just assume you did it the way that the book says. So you um, you would solve for tan the angle by uh, the inverse tangent function, tangent to the negative one of the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance divided by the resistance, and that should equal the phase angle. But again, you weren't given the, uh, the inductive or capacitive reactance in the problem, so you have to substitute, just like we did above, and you get that the, tan the inverse tangent of 2 pi f times l minus 1 over 2 pi F times C divided by the resistance, and that will give you your phase angle. I got a phase angle of 51.148 degrees. The last part of this question asks, 
uh, if the current is leading or lagging behind the voltage. And so I wanted to take a couple of pictures from the actual textbook and show you. This is from the Saraway and Vool College Physics textbook. And what you see here is, I'm, I'm going to zoom in on it, so uh, right here. It, it gives various examples. We have in our question an RLC circuit. So we have one of these two, or we have this circuit rather, and so it tells us what the phase angle is depending on the capacitive and inductive reactance. If the capacitive reactance is greater than the inductive reactance, then our phase angle is positive. If the capacitive reactance is greater, or I'm sorry, in this case is less than, if it's greater than, then we have a negative phase angle. And so the direction of our phase angle will tell us if the current is leading or lagging behind the voltage. And that comes from over here. So what you see here is we have the, the voltage across the uh, resistor, the voltage across the inductor, the voltage across the capacitor, and the voltage. And this is just showing what happens to the voltage. So in, whenever you have a voltage resistor, the voltage is in phase with the current. So you would draw all your current peaks right here. And we'll just so, pretend that this is our current. All of our current peaks would be in line. But whenever you add a, an inductor, all of a sudden, whatever the, the, the current is ahead, or the voltage is ahead of the current. And so you would say that when there's an inductor, the current lags and the voltage leads. So current lags, voltage leads. And we would say whenever the, there's a capacitor, so what you'll notice is all of a sudden my, the peak of my, of my voltage is out here. So I get a peak in my current way before way before I get a peak in my voltage. So the current peaks first, so it's leading. So if we were to, to be able to put some kind of a, a, um, a, a paper across here and lay it over here, which we would follow this and see that this is going up way before this gets to the top. So we would say that this is leading. And then this starts going down, and then in a few minutes later, that starts going down. And so that's what I mean by the, the current lags and the voltage leads, or the voltage leads and the current lags. In the case of a capacitor, the current leads. So current equals leading. Voltage is equal to lagging. Then when you have both capacitors and inductors, then you have to say, well, which one has the greatest effect? And you can't just take the, the capacitor and the inductor. You have to take... Uh, the, the part that um, the current is dealing with, which is the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance. So that tells you basically the relative resistance of each one. So if the capacitive reactance is, ha is having the biggest effect, then we'll get the capacitor effect. If the inductive reactance is having the biggest effect, we'll get the inductive effect. And so the current, in which I put current as a C, I know that current is I, I'm just abbreviating, uh, very poor to do in physics. So we literally just have to say, is the inductor greater than, less than, equal to, is the inductive reactance uh, greater than, less than, or equal to the capacitive reactance? And we can get that just by looking at our phase angle. So you saw over here, if it's positive, if it's negative. So if it's positive, then the capacitive reactance is less than the inductive reactance. And so we're going to get a greater inductive reactance, and so our current is going to lag. And so this is the final excerpt. I had this from out of the textbook as well. Um, you can read through it. It basically says the same thing that I said, but it says it in regards to the voltage rather than the current. So whatever the voltage is doing, if the voltage is leading, the current is lagging, and if the current, if the voltage is lagging, then the current is leading. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the about section of this video, and on the blog you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but 
I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.